Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Beer Garden today, along with Sarah and Steve. We will be talking about the night race card on this Wednesday at Happy Valley. Uh, on this meeting, Joe Morera, the jockey, is still suspended, and our Joe, he's now not free, so he will be joining us next time on in on the Beer Garden. So we will see him next time. So today we are going to talk about the Triple Trio races, and along with our best bet and value bet. Although Joe is not here, we will still include his selections in today's show. So let's talk. About the first leg of the triple trio first race five. It is a class four race over twelve hundred meters. Let us start with Sarah. Sarah, who will you go for in race five? Race five. I'm I'm taking this horse again. It's seven gang of brothers. He's coming out of barrier one, and we got Blake Shin aboard this time because Purton is staying on Harmony in home. Um, but Blake Shin's a great jockey, and I think we're going to see a really great ride out of him. He's just. You know, he didn't have the greatest start last time out um, on that race at the end of end of April, but still um, excelled enough to get a third placing there by only two lengths. And once he found his footing, it seemed like he really clicked into gear. They are keeping the blinkers on again this race, which I think made a big difference in his performance last time out. So seeing him come out of that um, interior barrier like that, I think is going to be a perfect setup for him to close in on a win. I do feel like this field is, is rather tough. But he's he's raced against some extremely tough company bef before and has excelled and continued to improve. Yes, I think so. Number seven, Gang of Brothers. This time, Barrier One will be a big advantage for him. And Steve, how about you? Who will you go for in race five? I went for the two horse Harmony and Home, written by Zach Burton. He's drawn nicely in, in draw stall four. And he's two from 27. He doesn't win too often, but uh, both his um, wins have come over course and distance. And they've, all, they've, they've also come under Zach Burton. So Zach gets on very well with the horse. It's interesting, isn't it? Because Zach was on this horse last time and he was also on Gang of Brothers uh, the last twice. So as Sarah says, Black Blake Shin takes over. It's nice to think that um, Zach Burton seemingly prefers Harmony and Home. But of course, as we know in Hong Kong racing, that's no guarantee that Zach Burton has got it right. So it's still a very interesting race. But I do like Harmony in home. And he's very well handicapped as well. He's about nine pounds below his last winning mark. He's actually off a career low mark of 55 now. And, and he's in form too. He's not like he's on, it's not like he's declining. I, th I still think he's running well. But what he does need is a good pace. And I think he'll have a good pace because you've got the likes of Oversubscribed who has natural pace because he's more of a thousand meter horse. And you've also got Ambitious Heart who I think will probably try and press on from a wide gate as well. And then, um, and there's also the likes of Birdsville, a horse I've picked a few times, a three year old whose mark gets lower and lower, still doesn't seem to be winning, but has a chance, but um, maybe not good enough this time, but you never know. Um, so that's for, for me anyway, Harmony and Home under Zach Pert. Yes, right. Number two, Harmony and Home will be ridden by Zach Purton. Yes, Zach actually has the choice uh, to choose well, which horse to be uh, to be able to ride. So number two, Harmony and Home, I think that uh, at the current rating of 55, he should be able to bounce back. And for me, I will be the same as Sarah. I will also go for the seventh gang of brothers. As we just mentioned that, I think that he this time jumping from barrier one, he can uh, stay in a great position, like getting the rail and maybe uh, just sitting behind the leaders, which will be a great position for him. I think that this four-year-old is quite honest and he always finished quite close and just uh, just a bit unlucky. So this time I hope uh, hopefully the barrier will be advantage for him. So uh, I will also go for number seven, Gang of Brothers. And for Joe, his selections will be number four, Burstfield. This time he will be ridden by Luke Curry, breaking from gate three. He just won an impressive barrier trial at Chongfa. And this time the gate is also quite ideal for him. So to recap race five, the first leg of the triple trio, Sarah and I will go for number seven, Gang of Brothers. Steve goes for number two, Harmony and Home. And Joe will go for number four, Burstfield. And the next race we are going to talk about will be the second leg of the Triple Trio, race six. It is a class three over 1200 meters. Again, Sarah, who do you like in race six? Well, I'm taking another horse that I picked last time out as well, but I just think this horse is as an, an amazing five-year-old really has come into play, come into being sex an, ex an exceptional horse. And that is the 11th Valiant Elegance. We got Lyle aboard again. Lyle got this horse home to a really nice victory last time out. Now he's jumping up in class. So he gets a little bit of a weight break and jumping from barrier eight. 
I mean, he's just consistent. He's going to try to get to the lead. I think the other horse that's going to try to battle him for the lead is going to be Jolly Good Heart, but I just don't feel like Jolly Good Heart has the strength to uh, stick on like we've seen out of Valiant Elegance. And I, I'm very confident in him coming up into the class three level here. And I think Lyle's going to give him a really nice ride. It's number 11, Valiant Elegance. This time he will be ridden by his best partner, Lyle Hewson again. And then up to class three should not be a problem for him because he is quite an honest horse with really consistent gait speed. Joe will also be the same. He also like number 11, Valiant Elegance. And Steve, how about you? Who do you like in race six? I went for the nine horse, Flaming Passion. He's uh, two from 16. Both those wins have come over course and distance and both have come under Matthew Chadwick, who is on board this time. And uh, he's got, he's nicely drawn also. He's on the paint in gate one. And that should be, he'll get a nice toe into the race because as Sarah says, Violent Elegance will surely adopt his uh, trailblazing tactics and try and go off in front. And there's every chance of bringing up the hat trick, hasn't he, for the great combination, Douglas White and Lyle, um, mm-hmm. Lyle Hewitson. But hopefully, hopefully um, my selection can win. I, I do like the chance of Flaming Passion. He's eight pounds above his last winning mark. So to, to quote the old cliche, he has no secrets from the handicapper. But he is a consistent horse, likeable. He's been placed the last four times. And he's coming back from a 40-odd day break, which might just have freshened him up. So I'm hoping that, um, hoping that Flaming Passion can make it win number three over course and distance. Yes, apart from Lau Hewson, Matthew Trevor is an other jockey that's having quite good results recently. So his smile here, number nine, Flaming Passion, will be breaking from gate one. And also, I quite like his very trial performance at the beginning of this month. He just showed a great speed and then he just kept to the end easily. So this time, the very draw will be a good help for him. And for me, I will be looking forward to the debutant, number seven, Encountered. And he will also be my value bet. He's a three-year-old as a, he is also also the first son of Churchill that racing in Hong Kong. So Churchill as a good, great stallion, uh, his uh, Pogini's performance in Europe is quite good this year as uh, for the three-year-olds. So Encounter is one of the three-year-olds. For his form in uh, UK, he had two starts over there. He is a 1,400 meters winner at Doncaster. He just led all the way and won it easily. And after arriving to Hong Kong, Encounter also had a barrier trial at Happy Valley. It is quite important for some new horses to gain some experience over the city circuits. So mm-hmm. Encounter showed us that that uh, on April 30th, the barrier trial, it shows that uh, his gay speed is quite consistent and then he's quite tough to keep till the end. So I think that he's now ready for racing or he even have, uh, he has the chance for winning as an outsider. So to recap, race six, the second leg of the triple trio, Sarah and Joe go for number 11, Valiant Elegance. Steve likes number nine, Flaming Passion. And I will have my value bet here that will be number seven, Encountered. So the last leg of the triple trio will be race seven. It is also a 1200 meters race. It is a class three race here. Sarah, who do you like in race seven? I'm taking the one here, Tula Begil, um, jumping out of barrier one as well. We get Purton aboard. I mean, this horse had an exceptional career in New Zealand before coming to Hong Kong, you know, ending his career there on top with a win in the Futurity Stakes. Once he got acclimated, he, he, he really seemed to improve much, at least over the Happy Valley track. As we saw um, back in March, he had a really nice third placing there, but really, really close margins um, at the 1200 meter distance. So he's coming in. This is my best bet as well. I think the interior draw jumping barrier one is going to set him up. Perfect. Purton has extremely strong form on this horse to see if we could advance this horse to another win and hopefully get his first win here in Hong Kong. Yes, number one, a two leap ago. It is good to see that Zach Purton keeps riding him and it is also be a good decision moving back to Happy Valley. I agree with you. And Steve, how about you? Do you also agree the number one, a two leap ago? Yes, I do. I agree with Sarah. And the, I mean, there's not much more to say after Sarah's beautiful pronunciation of two leap So there's very little for me to add. But yes, a very nice horse. Also my best bet, breaking from barrier one. And I think he can turn the tables on the Coney County because in on his penultimate run, he was third to that horse. And this time he's three pounds better off with that rival. And he's also much better drawn, as we've said. He's drawn 
in, in gate one, whereas last time he was drawn in 12. So he's better drawn. He's also three pounds better off. And I think the last time when he was slightly disappointing, I just think he was a bit keen in the race and Zach Burton kind of knew his fate close home and he didn't really push him too hard. He was saving him for another day. And he's probably freshened up after a little break as well. I really do like a Tula Bagheel, number one. Yes, yeah, so I think that we uh, have some quite similar selections in race seven. Uh, Sarah and Steve go for number one, Atelier Bigel, and Joe will go for number four, Nikoni Kanti, as his best bet as well. Nikoni Kanti will be ridden by Black Sheen jumping from gates four. Uh, his form also also showed that he is uh, also doing better over Happy Valley. And I think that last time I over shutting was just a forgivable one. So uh, uh, Joe will give Nikoni Kanti one more chance at Happy Valley. And for me, actually, I was just juggling among uh, between the one and the four. So uh, Atulia Bagel and Nikoni Kanti both are my two top two selections. And then I will uh, have my uh, decision on the one Atulia Bagel because written by Zach Purden. And I think that the draw will be quite helpful. He will be breaking from gate one. And I think that his performance over Happy Valley before is quite uh, impressive. And then he is still improving just like was uh, Steve and Sarah said. And I will be looking forward to number one, Atulia Bagel as well. So to a simple recap of race seven we only select two horses here Sarah Steve and myself will go for number one Atuli Bigel and Steve uh, uh, sorry and Joe will go for number four Nikani County so after talking about the triple trio on Wednesday let's talk about our best bet Sarah can you remind us who will be your best bet Yes, mine is uh, the one in race seven Atuli Bigel I just think this horse this three-year-old is very promising um, over the Happy Valley course, it seems that he favors that. I, I do agree with what Steve said last time, you know, Zach just didn't put, push him. Um, he knew the horse's fate and, and just kind of rode the race out. So now he's coming in fresh 45 days since he last um, really ran that hard. So I, I just think, you know, with his performance as a two-year-old and then really coming in as a three-year-old and that uh, he's just, he's improving he's showing a lot of promise and I think Purton really knows how to ride this horse to a victory and really read this horse and how to maneuver him throughout a race as he is you know still a, a young horse um, he really gets to know him and I just think the barrier draw sets him up perfect Yes, definitely. Zach Purden on Wednesday, he gets a lot of good mounts and I'm quite sure that he will have some great results on Wednesday. And Steve, can you tell us again who will be your best bet? Yeah, it's also going as my best bet for Atula Bagheel. And I think that this is the second division of the Class 3 over 1,200. And I think it's the most, the more interesting of the two divisions as well. And I think we'll get a nice price about Atula Bagheel because we've got three last-time winners in the race. We've got a smart idea going for the hat-trick we have Nanjom Sings and we also have Exponential. So for, for punters looking at a choice of, of horses, three last time out winners may give um, Atula Bagheel a nicer price as well. So I think it's a very interesting race. But I think Smart Idea has won four times this season. I don't think he can do it again. Famous last words he might do. But it keeps on asking for more improvement. Exponential one last time. But I think um, what we have with Atula Bagheel is a nice horse who's on the up. He's a young He's unexposed, he's well-drawn, he's got that burden on board. So I think everything points to a good performance from a Tula Bagheel at what will be quite an attractive price. Yes, right. So a double best bet here, race seven, number one, a Tulip Bagheel for both Sarah and Steve. And it seems that race seven are quite popular among us because Joe is also having his best bet here, which will be number four, Nikoni Kanti. As we just discussed race seven, uh, Nikoni Kanti will be breaking from gates four. He can also be staying in a great position under Black Sheen. And then actually Nikoni Kanti is a uh, Happy Valley de debut winner uh, in Hong Kong. It is not never easy for a horse to win on the Bills at Happy Valley. So Nikoni County also going back uh, to Happy Valley. We are quite looking as uh, Joe is quite looking forward to him as well. And for my best bet, it will be in the earlier session. I like num race two. Number one, uh, Happy Daily. He will be ridden by Zach Purden. And then Happy Daily will be breaking from gate two. It is quite a uh, 
good for him because over this distance, 1650 meter in a class four race, he can definitely stay in a good position getting the rail. And then I quite like his performance last time out in class three. He finished fourth, but uh, he was beaten by Fever Hunter, Game Player Times, and Beauty Glories. All of them are the front runners. However, Happy Daddy, uh, at the beginning, he stayed at the back and then he showed a great turn of foot in the home straight and chased well to finish fourth. And this time racing oh, uh, in a class four, he is quite uh, competitive here. And also, Zach Proton takes the ride. I will be very looking forward to him. So to recap our best bet on Wednesday, both Sarah and Steve will go for race seven, number one, Atuli Begel, and Joe likes race seven, number four, Nikani Kanti. And my best bet will be in race two, number one, Happy Daily. And after talking about our best bet, let's look for some outsiders for you. For our value bet, Sarah, who do you have? I'm going to go to the opener here in race one, which is a class five over 1650. And I'm going with the four, Mana from Heaven with Alexi Bedell aboard. Alexi just did a nice barrier trial with him over the Happy Valley track, getting a, a fourth place placing there, but re looked really good, really great form. Um, you know, he hasn't raced since the beginning of April, but he's coming in fresh. And I just feel like he's jumping from barrier one here. And I feel like that's a perfect setup for him as this horse has unfortunately been drawing wide the past couple races. So he just, he's not been able to overcome them. So hopefully that interior here will give him a bit of, of a level up to perform. And, you know, he, but he does have great form and he is consistent. So we're seeing him come to this 1650, but we've seen him quite a bit over the happy Valley course. And I'm hoping here we can get some, some good value and hopefully Alexi will get us a win. Yes, so Sarah's value bet it will be in race one, number four, Manor from Heaven. Finally, a good draw for him. I know that Steve liked this horse quite well, but who will be your value bet this time, Steve? Well, um, yes, Manor from Heaven, I've actually picked in my blog. And, and also, I like number three, I like Asian one. I think that's an interesting horse under Matthew Poon. But I went for the last race, a cracking class two sprint, and I went for Keep You Warm. A really interesting race. We've got three last start winners here. We've got Campione, we've got Lucky With You, and we also have um, Eason. So a cracking race. But I went for Keep You Warm under Zach Purton, who's one from two on the horse. And it's an interesting horse, um, Keep You Warm. He's three from 28. All three wins have come over a 1,000 metres, once in the UK and twice at Happy Valley. But I think there's nothing wrong with this form over the 1,200. I think he's a, a horse that's getting close to winning over 1,200. He doesn't do much wrong. He's been second, third, fourth over the 1,200 many times. And I'm hoping it all falls into place. The the three horses that I mentioned earlier, the, the Campion, Lucky With You and then Eason, they, they're all impressive horses. They've all gone up in the weights quite a bit for their latest wins. So they, so I think long term, I think they're going to be very good horses, but it, it asks for more improvement each time. And it's just possible to keep you warm can actually win this time, I think. He's, he's nicely drawn in, in gate four. And you've also got the likes of um, Lucky With You. This is his first visit to Happy Valley. So there's a question mark about certain things. And, and also, the last run that we saw with um, Campione, he's gone up eight pounds for a very impressive win on dirt. So we don't really know if, if he can translate that improvement to turf. So it's interesting to see. In effect, he's like he's gone up like 14 pounds, hasn't he, for, for actually winning on a dirt race. And he's now going back to turf. So I think it's an interesting race. And I like Keep You Warm. I think he's a good horse. He's, um, he's quite exposed, but he's very consistent. And I like his chance. Yeah, so Steve's very bad race nine, number eight, keep you warm. It is a good move to uh, return back to Happy Valley because he is a course expert. Maybe currently at the rating, he will find a bit tough to uh, for the class two race over Shatin or over the Shatin dirt and over the Shatin turf. So moving back to Happy Valley, I will also be looking forward to him as well. And for Joe's value bet, it will also be in race nine. He will choose number three, Silver Fig. It is quite interesting to see that because uh, Silver Fig is a great already horse and then but this time he will be racing over happy valley the turf track uh i think that he still have a chance to surprise us because uh jumping from gate one he can stay in a great position and in the race night the pace will be quite fast i guess so maybe it will be quite favorable for the back marker silver fake he will be written by anton hamelin breaking from gate one i'm quite looking forward to see him to show some great turn of foot in the home stretch so race nine number three silver fake will be joe's value bet on Wednesday. 
And for my value bet, uh, we just mentioned that uh, it will be in race six. I like the debutant number seven encountered because uh, I just talked about his uh, preparation work. And I think that the very trial at the uh, last month will, was quite impressive. And then I think that he is now well prepared for the Happy Valley debuts. So I will be looking forward to him. Race six, number seven encountered. So to recap our value bets on Wednesday, Sarah will be in race one, number four, Manna from Heaven. For Steve, it is race nine, number eight, Keep You Warm. And for Joe, it is race nine again, number three, Silver Fig. And for me, it will be race six, number seven, Encountered. So that's all for our preview on this Wednesday. The card is quite interesting. And hopefully the weather will still be fine because the rain just stopped and then hopefully the ground will be quite good on Wednesday. So hopefully we can find some more winners for you. See you next time on Sunday. Bye-bye.